Hey guys, welcome to game three. This is BSL season 16, Hostile League round of 16 group D final match between Nimpo and Fisheye. And I forgot to update the score, but it is 1-1. Bottom left-hand corner, we've got Fisheye starting as the kind of, I don't know what to call this, being called Olive in chat by Piano. Uh, I will say mustard yellow. It's, I don't like that yellow, but I can't do the color swap. So I guess that's technically mustard yellow, right? But whatever. Nimpo, upper left-hand corner, is the red Zerg. It almost felt like, yeah, Nemesis might have been his band map on ladder. Or in general, just because he um, he looked uncomfortable. And I, I want to attribute it more to Fisheye's really good early game harass. But it, it did seem like Nimpo had a really strong plan game one. And then game two just kind of got flustered and fell apart a little bit. Could be the tournament nerves. Could be that just losing that hatchery and also realizing that he was trying to pull a 973 with a hatchery at a locked location was potentially a mistake. It looks like we are seeing a setup for maybe another forge expand. I'm wondering if Fisheye is going to do the double probe walkout to try to get the Nexus confirmation. It looks like he is in fact doing that. Second probe is going to come across Nimpo's base. Again, we are seeing an overpool from Nimpo. So forge dropped Second probe meandering its way out. Nimpo sending that overlord to the upper right-hand corner first. So it might be a minute before he gets a scout. But I do believe... I think on Vermeer, the distances are such that you can sneak... Don't quote me on this. But I think you might be able to sneak a Nexus before cannon on against an overpool, but not a nine pool. So wandering up... Spawning pool. I guess we'll confirm it with if Fisheye goes for the Nexus rather than the cannon here. Probe drawing back. Drone making its way in. I wonder if anyone's ever gone for like a weird hatchery block out on the front against Protoss. That'd be rather silly. Yeah, okay, confirmed. Against, uh, I trust Fisheye on this, that you can go ahead and get the Nexus before cannon. Do have a pair of Zerglings being constructed. Probe waiting nearby to go ahead and drop that initial cannon for defense. And drone has seen all that it needs to see. Oh, I like the little blockade and damage. Got a little spicy with that probe as well. Needs to be very careful though because losing early game vision can be a problem. Waiting on 150. There's the gateway and probe blocking the gap. So cannon should warp in by the time the Zerglings get here. Fisheye actually doing a Pretty good job interrupting these Zerglings along the way. That second probe making its way across. So Nimpo not going to be able to get any additional information and gets that Nexus in solid time. Third hatchery being plopped down near immediately in response. And we'll see what the option for Nimpo is in this match. It looked like... So we know that he can execute a 973. He's seen 97... We saw him try a 973 previous match. But a lot of that tends to be predicated on whether you can eliminate that probe scout. Some Zerg, as a rule, will go 973 when they eliminate that initial scout. Other Zerg, I kind of enjoy it while they're... They'll instead opt to go for uh, sometimes three hatch mutilisk and go for that initial punch at the main, presuming that a cannon is being skipped there. And sometimes, more often than not, they actually uh, do manage to get that. So probe wandering up, ooh, taking a lot of base damage, Shen health left was able to confirm the location of that third hatchery and gets wiped out. Now we'll see if Nimpo... No, he's already morphing his way to Lair, so it looks like he does, in fact, want to opt for three hatch mutilisk play. We'll see if he's going to, again, play a style more towards game one, since that was successful for him. Initial Zealot. And another second gas. And so now I worry about Fisheye, because Fisheye, again, going in towards the uh, Bisu build-ish style where he's going to field Dark Templar and Corsair. And if this rolls back into a five hatchery, which I believe it will because that's what we saw out of Nimpo game one. Nimpo executed that extremely well and just was able to shell up and macro. So I don't know if Fisheye has some sort of adjustment on that in this match. Looks like he does have a Zealot out on the field this time maybe to create some interruption. At that third, there's a pile of Zerglings nearby. 
They do have speed, so they can very quickly jump on the cell. Let's see if they're able to mitigate losses. The drone's briefly interrupted. So able to at least make the drone stop mining for a second, but oh, and able to even get behind the wall. That's nice. So at least able to get a Zergling kill, but not a lot else. We do see a slew of Zealots being produced, so maybe we're going to see plus one weapon, Citadel of a Dune, Speed Zealot this time rather than any attempt at DT. Spire being constructed. First Corsair will be out. <coughs> Another critical thing is we'll see if that initial Overlord... We'll see the uh, how the Overlord timing works out with everything. I think the Corsair can just get a spot, come back, kill this Overlord if it can find it out in the field this time. Fourth Hatchery, interestingly, yeah, this is definitely going to... Yeah, we already have additional Hatcheries plopping down to move the way towards five hatch hydralis so the spire is going to be there in place to get that initial scourge to take down that corsair but i think spotting the hatchery at this location the evolution chamber should be a big indicator to fisheye that this is going to be more five hatch style of play he's already got zelt leg speed being researched no scourge being built on location so he is going to get away with this overlord kill the spire is finished so one overlord down that puts ninpo in the red the Scourge out looks like Fisheye able to get a pretty good dodge. Scourge in close pursuit. Going to make their way to the cannon back to the main. Second Corsair is out. Looks like the Overlord was also taken out at the natural expansion. Which again is supply capping Nimpo briefly. Having to bonus up. Plus one weapons being researched. And I take it back. We do have the Templar archives to maybe make DT play happen. So it's going to be three gate DTs. This time it looks like all of the Scourge, so one Scourge lands. But critically, that first Corsair wasn't wiped out, which allows that critical mass of Corsair to come out a little bit earlier. Also, plus one weapons, I believe, was started a little bit earlier here than from Fisheye. So rather than having that fight move out around the nine minute mark, you can get it out potentially a little bit earlier. Overlord speed is upgrading. I still am concerned that Nimpo's defense is just going to be a bit too strong. He's already SimCity at both locations, though this is still a little bit of a wider expanse to deal with overlord speed about halfway finished. The Zelts might provide some support, however. Looks like he's actually only one DT being produced. The rest are going to be High Templar to have that mid-game Psy Storm. And Nimpo, yeah, dropping a creep colony, he's going to need it because this is a good amount of Zealots. Plus one weapons is not going to be there, but they still might be able to create that distraction for the Hydralis. Drone's actually pulling off the line to try to drone drill, but the Overlord's overhead taking a lot of losses. The Zealot's still there, so two Overlords down, and I'm expecting more out of this. Nimpo now in the red with Zealot streaming across all the way into the main. So able to get all the way on location, trying to focus fire the Spire brief, uh, briefly, going to turn around, engage those Hydralis. The Corsair repositioning, going to try to get some additional Overlord kills in the midst of this distraction and getting over to Lord Kills to keep Nimpo continually in the red. Wonderful play there. It looks like the Zealots were clean, cleaned up at the main. But this time, it's really paying off for Fisheye. And look at this. Nearly every Overlord killed Ace. Looks like, I think this is one of two Overlords that are out in the field right now. And a Dark Templar is making its way up. If it gets into the natural expansion, it's going to have some time before and in fact if it gets all the way up into the main which it might be able to this could be additional drone kills hydralisks are now streamed toward the, towards the natural expansion i think this is emergency mode for nimpo side storm just completing and it looks like there are there is going to be side storm to provide some support there's not a lot of zealots though otherwise three cannons four cans being dropped defensively the drones under assault 40 t kills already the hydralisks however are here keep an eye on that dt using uh, the nice F key option, nod to chat. Waiting for some Psy Storm. That was the High Templar that I believe, no, two. Okay, so there's still some energy, but I don't see the Psy Storm happening just yet. That would have been a critical piece on this defense, but it looks like the Hydralis might get cleaned up anyway. The Spire at the very least is gone. And that Dark Templar still getting bonus kills, finally wiped out. But wow, Nimpo took a lot of damage. He's actually still got a decent drone count, but the Corsair is still active, getting more Overlord kills. And Nimpo again in the red. And if there's more Dark Templar, well, actually, if the Zealots just make their way up to the third, maybe they can just wide walk their way through. We'll see. This might be too few Zealots to really make that happen. 
The Corsair have been absolutely fantastic, currently assaulting the main fisheye, making great use out of them this time. Again, Nimpo still in the red, so it's only going to be that single Hydralisk. Well, I guess what he's got is far, maybe five Hydralisks to his name right now. One of the Corsair is getting wiped out, but this has still been massive damage from fisheye. Just continual floods. Double the supply right now. Now The High Templar moving up. Suddenly got an accent there for a half second. So we're going to see some Psy Storm on those Hydralisks as well, which is freeing up those Zealots to wreak havoc at the natural expansion. The Corsair is still working away on additional Overlords. Nimpo, I love the comment. Crazy. Ha ha, GG. And Fisheye advances to the round of eight in spectacular fashion. I was honestly expecting that to go much like game one, but well played from Fisheye. Showing that he can get it done. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Again, give a like, a subscribe, tell a friend. And uh, again, if you want to see on the higher demand loads, um, some fixed whatever you can donate to the GoFundMe or Kickstarter or whatever. Hope you guys enjoyed it regardless. Thanks for listening.